So this might be the first like revisit that I actually do. Um, we're still talking about dogs because on the last episode, um, episode 15 called Grim Dango, I was talking about dogs, a tale about a big black dog. Um, and Thanksgiving came up, so I didn't record that weekend. But I was listening to another podcast, a new podcast um, called Theories of the Third Kind, a new podcast I'm into. And they were brought up a folklore or urban legend or something like that. And it made me think of what I can add to, change, or like do differently from the Grim Dango. More so add to or expand upon like the um, folklore and the lore of Grim. Grim, if you don't remember, the last episode was about the Grim was the name of the dog, a big wolf dog where. I was inspired by Dracula because that's how Dracula came to um, England um, on a ship. He disguised himself as a big dog um, to sneak off the ship because he killed everyone on the ship. So I had a um, idea where where a demon or Dracula or something like that was trapped in this dog. Um, But the new podcast I'm listening to called Theories of the Third Kind was talking about Skinwalker. Um, not Skinwalker Ranch, because I did bring up Skinwalker, Skinwalker Ranch, um, which is in Utah or Colorado. I can never remember. On one of my previous episodes, I think is where the mushroom grows. But this um, folklore is, is more about um, or more originated in Native, Native American um, folklore. It's literally called Skinwalkers, uh, mostly the Navajo um, Nation. Where I, where I live is mostly Seminole tribe, or that's what it's known for. There's probably many other tribes that lived here before. But um, Skinwalker Native American folklore is literally, um, they call them witches. And there's, there's people who do bad things, and they can disguise themselves as actual animals. They talk about um, these witches that can, or Skinwalker witches, um, that can turn into wolves, bears, uh, coyotes to do like bad things. And on the podcast, they talked about how, you know, the history of it or what is known about the history and how um, it's generally known for being like these skinwalker witches do bad things. Like they kill people and then um, turn into wolves or turn into wolves to kill people and all this stuff. Um and that reminded me of the like the last episode I did was grim. And I was like, hmm, maybe I can add to it where because I was thinking it's going to be set in Florida. Like I said, where I live here, um, it's Seminole culture that it's mostly known for. And some I looked up Seminole culture, Seminole, Seminole Native American culture has their own version of uh, Skinwalker witches. Um, but here they're mostly based around um, instead of wolves and bears because it's Florida. They're based on uh, witches. This thing called uh, Stig Stig Inni, S T I G I N I. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, which is an owl witch. Um, that's generally known for like evil things. Like they turn into these, or they're owl witches all the time, or but they're known for like evil deeds. Um, a, and it's described. The folklore is described as a tall undead owl, nine feet tall. Um, I think there was like one picture of a statue of it that I found. I couldn't find really too many like artist uh, renditions of it um, online. But I was thinking of to go along my grim grim tale. The background could be this Native American skinwalker, um, this witch skinwalker folklore. That's what it could be based around. Like the Navajo culture, they have it based on wolves. But you know, grim could be some sort of wolf or big dog. Um, But also, like, to fill in more of the background, like, in the Grimm uh, episode I did previously, that the main character would have to, like, find, like, comes into this folklore not knowing and learns more about it. And maybe that can be the more of the background, the Skinwalker Native American background. Um, It could be a good witch, bad witch thing where there's kind of an in-between witch trapped in this wolf that he can, uh, there's a... There was a skinwalker legend of someone that turned into this wolf, but they got trapped. That's what he has to keep inside of this wolf form that he can control more uh, because it's a single dog. Um, It's older or weaker or something, but then he could learn more from like an owl, which maybe there's um, 
an owl witch skin walker that's kind of a for some reason i don't they said they were evil witches when i looked up the history of it but for some reason i i, I don't see owls as being evil i see them more as wise maybe that's growing up as a kid and there was always like a cartoon of a wise owl um also the you know the titty roll owl but maybe the owl witch could be the good witch that kind of guides the main character my main character whoever i decide is a main character um more into this uh folklore this skinwalker folklore and the owl, how i imagine it would be the owl witch as a good witch the main character and this grim dog that they're kind of using they have to keep it close because now they're the caretaker of it to keep the negative the bad entity the the, the evil witch inside this but they have to go on some kind of adventure um and they have to learn how to work with each other and trust each other because they kind of depend on each other even though you know it's a good witch a bad witch and the person in between who i forgot how this like a story um it's usually with movies and it's i forgot how they they uh they how writers like do this or what it's called where it's like the one person that's new to a world and that's kind of the example that's kind of the metaphor of the audience the audience is being brought into this world as this character who is in the story is like a dumb character. They're they're new. They're into a world. There's all this stuff going around. I always use the example of, or I always remember the example of um, Big Trouble in Little China. Jack Burton, like he's new to that you know, old um, lore of old, I think it was Chinese or Japanese. I can't remember. I'll say Chinese um, folklore with all these old demons and they used to live under the earth and all this stuff like he's the dumb character being brought into this world and doesn't know what's going on that's you know uh how the audience is i I forgot i I don't know my my storytelling classes my english lit classes i don't remember the there's a term for it or an example of it but i'm sorry if i'm confusing or rambling that's like that would be the character my 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 character that i'm writing or the character i'm inhabiting in this story would be the dumb character they're thrown into this world um, that they didn't know they were going to be in. And they have to, all, they're all of a sudden the, not only the protector of this grim dog to keep it alive, but they know they have to protect it from itself because they have to t- protect the world because if this dog somehow transforms back into the skinwalker, which another form of it, it can wreak havoc. But they need it to kind of be with them to fight for them sometimes because there's other entities after this uh, skinwalker grim dog. But then you have the good witch character that's directing them throughout the world and giving them, you know, um, advice and, you know, showing them what's on this what's going on in this underground skinwalker witch world of, you know, Native American folklore that's forgotten now in this, you know, modern time has been hidden over the years. Um, but they're thrown into this world where the things are happening and they, they learn as they go. Um, so it'll be kind of a character with the good witch on the left side, the bad, witch, like, you know, the angel and the demon, you know, the conscience on the bad side. Um, and this character has to deal with all of a sudden they have power. They were a normal person. All of a sudden they learn all this power, the power they have, that they fall into this world but they start to learn that what power is can corrupt because they see what's happening with the, the evil witch skinwalker as Grimm. Um, they found that they see that Grimm found this power, but then, but then, you know, went haywire, went bad with it and got too corrupt and got trapped in this dog. Um, and that's kind of what the good witch, the owl witch, the Stegini is trying to, you know, tell them that, you can have power, but uh, I hate to use this. I hate to use this from Spider Man, but with power comes responsibility. Uh, R.I.P. Uncle Ben. But um, yeah, that whole trope in the story, I'll say. Um, but yeah, that that could be the background. Um, I know the story started out with me talking about how you know it was Dracula, but you have to you have to take an example and write it your own way. I doubt there's like too many. Native American folklore kind of hero tales like this that I can think of um, kind of supernatural things. 
that'd be good. Maybe be maybe there is that I just don't know of. Um, that'd be good. Like as a change instead of just the old traditional, you know, Dracula or from England or from somewhere in Europe or you know Frankenstein. It could be something different like that. Um, the Skinwalker Native American uh, folklore tales with the Good Witch as the owl. I'm not, I, I can't see an owl as evil. Um, I did do like some of the AI generated um, like images of what I, I typed in, like Skinwalker, Native American, um, owl, witch and all that stuff. And just uh, they couldn't get a handle of what uh, what they put out wasn't what I was expecting. Like I wanted to the group I was talking about with the main character, the good witch, um the good owl witch and the bad grim skinwalker, which, uh, which is the dog. It, it was just meshing them all together. I wanted three separate people, but it just like put everyone together. Um, it, I, I, of course I put them on my website. I put them on the Instagram, but, um, yeah, like I didn't even do the chat bot for this one. Um, because I just wanted to make this one small. This is like my part two. I always want to, you know, that's the goal of you have one idea then you know, you think about it a different way. So you get another example. I'm going to build on it. You never know which idea can hit and I can really fill it out and actually become something real. But that's all in my imagination, all in my imagination now. But I just wanted to add to this. Um, yeah. Grim part two. I want to do this more with more ideas. I want to come up with a couple more where I have the original idea of something happens. And then, you know, later on, you know, I revisit it or I change it or, you know, I expand on it this time. Like I did with this episode, the part two of the grim with the skinwalker. Um, um, but yeah, that's, um, that's where I'll end this one. I wanted to keep it short. It's another part two. Hopefully there'll be a part three, part three, maybe something else will pop up uh, about this grim skinwalker tale. That's I'm going to combine it. So it's grim and now skinwalker at skinwalker ranch, but native American skinwalker, witch culture, um, which folklore, I should say, from Native American Native American uh, culture. Um, but yeah, I ended there. It is it is December. We are on that Christmas creep. I have not thought of any um, seasonal holiday or anything like that ideas. I'm, I've been listening to the music nonstop and watching the movies and uh, TV show episodes, but it hasn't hit me yet. Maybe it never will. I don't know. But uh, we'll see. But thanks for listening. Um, hope you enjoyed this edition. Like I said, hope for a part three. But thanks for listening to whoever you are to me. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm Kirk. And this is Dumb Test Late, um, if you're wondering. Bye. 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 Bye.